Hello everybody, welcome back to the video, and today I am ranking all of the X-Men movies. So, for the sake of this, I am going to include the Wolverine trilogy, the two Deadpools, and the New Mutants as well. That makes 13 movies. But let's just get into this with Dead Last. So, number 13 is the New Mutants. This movie... I just watched this one earlier today for the first time, and I was thinking, what? This movie genuinely was the one that had me the most confused out of any X-Men movie. So, let's talk about what I liked. Um, the highlight of the movie, the only highlight of the movie that I can really think of off the top of my head, for some reason... There's one performance in this movie I really liked, and that was uh, Anna Taylor Joy as um, the character of Magic. I'm not going to try to pronounce the character's actual name because I'm probably going to butcher it. So, um, it was the only sort of kind of redeeming quality. It also had some good CGI and interesting fight scenes as well, but I don't know. This ended the X -Men, the Fox Mutant series on more of a whimper than a bang. That, that's really all I can say about it. Number 12. Let's, let's get to that one. Number 12 is X-Men Apocalypse. I was so excited to watch this one. And then I was extremely disappointed. Ancient Egypt is one of the coolest subjects in history, in my opinion. And so, you know, a movie, a, sorry, a X-Men movie about an ancient Egyptian mutant is such a cool idea that ultimately it feels wasted. Now, I don't, there's nothing that particularly is bad, it's just that... Far from the New Mutants, this is the one I enjoyed the least. I don't know. It's just something didn't click right in my brain with this movie. Um, if you want Marvel and Egyptology, I think Moon Knight is a much better route to go down. Although, uh, Fassbender and McAvoy are really good in this movie. I think they're consistently good. Like, uh... Stewart and McKellen were in the original few movies. McAvoy and Fassbender are always consistent in their performances. Uh, apart from that, stuff like introducing the Phoenix feels just like a way to rush the ending. Um, and also the only real ramifications this movie has is Xavier is bald at the end of it. I was thinking when I finished this, does this movie only exist so you can see what Xavier looked, how he became bald? You know, I, I mean, I think people generally thought maybe he shaved his head or just his hair fell out. You know, not an ancient Egyptian mutant tried to possess him, which caused his head, which caused his hair to fall out. You know, we. We don't need an explanation as to why his hair is gone. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Number 11 is Dark Phoenix. I actually kind of liked this movie. Now, like I said with Apocalypse, uh, McAvoy and Fassbender are very good in this movie. They are just fantastic the whole time. Um, I don't know. Jean, I think the actress they got to play her for the new generation isn't as good as uh, Femke Jensen, aka Xenia from GoldenEye. Yeah, when, once you realize that, you, you can't not real think about that when, when you, uh, when you see her as Jean Grey. Um, and I like that this one kind of brings a sense of finality to it. I did not, ex spoilers by the way, uh, I did not expect them to kill Mystique. Mystique, yeah, 
I did not expect them to kill her. I was genuinely shocked by that twist. Um, you know, I kind of figured someone was going to die, but he, I mean, to be fair, you, you don't see her in uh, Days of Future Past. So, I mean, the timeline stuff doesn't really work anyway, but... Hey. Apart from that, the fight scenes are pretty good. And I like the fact that it ends the same way the first one does with um with uh Xavier and uh Magneto playing a game of chess. So I like how it kind of ends where the first one ended. Except while that was more of a two enemies this is two friends uh let's get to the next one which i think is probably gonna be a little controversial number 10 x2 x-men united i don't know what it was about this one it just didn't click as much as there were still there were things in this movie that i really liked uh, the opening, fantastic. The attack on the mansion is really good, and anything to do with Wolverine is really good. And also, Nightcrawler in general is really good, and Magneto and Xavier. However, anything that is separated from the Wolverine origin stuff... For example, Stryker is tied to Wolverine's past and everything, but his evil plan is not. So, I don't know. The best parts are when Wolverine is on screen and Magneto. It was really cool seeing these people team up. And I just realized this is actually the lowest uh, Hugh Jackman uh, appearance on the list of Apart from his cameo in Apocalypse, which I forgot about until now. So yeah, uh, good movie. I think from this point, they are all pretty good. And yes, that does mean that I have a little bit of controversial opinions. Speaking of which, number nine, X-Men The Last Stand. Okay, so I'll be honest, right? Some of the thoughts on this are retroactive, but initially when I went through these the first few, right, I liked the first one. The second one wasn't, um, you know, wasn't the best. And then I watched the third one, and I had a lot of fun watching this one. Um, oh boy! And honestly, I think Magneto's fate for the end of this movie is really perfect because. What's something, what's the worst fate you can give Magneto? Strip away his powers. Honestly, I think that letting Magneto live as a human rather than him dying as a mutant is actually a very interesting uh, thing because that's a worse fate for Magneto. The Dark Phoenix stuff is okay. Uh, I've read the story. Um, it's one of the few comic stories I have read. Uh, another one actually does appear later on this list. Uh, in the form of Days of Future Past. But, I, I don't know. It's just, it feels like it should be the primary plot rather than this mutant cure thing. Uh, however, I, yeah, honestly, the bit, probably the biggest issue this movie has is the way it gets rid of Cyclops. It's just like, oh yeah, Cyclops isn't, he needs to go. You know, we need to establish the stakes. And so, literally, his final scene in the trilogy is him finding Jean Grey and getting killed by her. Oh, well. Anyway, let, let's move on to the next one. Which is number eight. 
the original X-Men. All right, so there are plenty of things to like about this one. Uh, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine is probably one of the most instantly iconic uh, superhero movie castings. Uh, and uh, Patrick Stewart as Charles Xavier. And Ian McKellen as Magneto. They are the highlights of the movie. They are the they are the best parts of this movie. Apart from that, some aspects seem a little too cartoonish. I mean, I like a good comedy, but some of the stuff in here is just really weird. For example, why is um Magneto's plan to genetically convert every human into a mutant. Why doesn't he actually stay to see the results of his of his science experiment? I don't know. It's weird, but, you know, um, I, I guess it's so you can have the main characters realize, oh shoot, something bad's gonna happen. Uh, apart from that, it's okay. But there are definitely ones I like more than this one. So let's get on to number seven. Number seven, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Oh boy, here we go. So, often cited as one of the worst superhero movies of all time, I obviously disagree with this opinion. <laughs> and... I think that this was the action. Now, I liked the first three, but I think this is the first one I actually had fun watching. It was, it was weird seeing. So let me just get this out of the way. It was weird seeing Cotton from Scream show up playing Wolverine's brother. It was such a weird thing to see. But I bought it. <laughs> and then. It, the plot is convoluted, but it was fun to watch. Um, honestly, the only kind of issue this movie has is its treatment of Deadpool. Um, you know, a character who in the comics, his nickname is the Merc with a Mouth, but yet, in this movie, they sew his mouth shut. Yeah. And actually, um, there's a really interesting video that actually says that the science of this movie, uh, with the the headshot taking it being the reason for Wolverine's amnesia, you know, that's actually scientifically how that would work in real life. But apart from that, this movie is actually pretty good and. Obviously, I think the one thing everyone can agree on about this movie is that Ryan Reynolds was perfect for Deadpool. But, yeah. Actually, speaking of Deadpool, number six is the first Deadpool. This movie was really fun to watch. Um, so, the constant fourth wall breaks were funny. One of my favorite ones was the... Um, Part where Deadpool goes to the mansion, knocks on the door, and it's that teenage girl that showed up with Colossus earlier, and he was like, "Where the where the you came? It seems like the studio can 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 only afford two X Men." Uh, that was uh, that was kind of funny. Um, apart from that, uh, I think Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool is probably. Apart from Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, maybe the best casting for the X-Men series. He is really funny. And he has a very interesting story in this movie. And honestly, most of the things I have to say about this movie have already been said on the internet. If I had to pick one reason as to why it's not in the top five, it's just because it doesn't really have an interesting villain. That That's really it. That and I just prefer the top five. Number five, The Wolverine. This is probably the most underrated X Men movie because I watched this one and I was really impressed by it. Uh, this was actually James Mangold's introduction to the series, and everyone talks about his second effort for the franchise, 
which uh, obviously, you know, I will get to later. But no one really talks about his introduction to the series, The Wolverine. I loved the setting of Japan, uh, and the fight scenes were really good. It gets kind of silly in the third act, but you know what? It It's a still a really fun movie, and yeah, just really good. So, let's get into the number four. Sorry, the number four placement on this list. Alright, so number four is Deadpool 2. Uh, I don't know who prefers Deadpool 2 over Deadpool 1, but I I laughed more at this one. Uh, the, this one was funnier, in my opinion. It was also the one that I thought had the better story, a better performance from Ryan Reynolds, a much better opening scene. His sort of parody of The End of Logan was really good. Uh, and the post credit scene for this movie might be maybe my favorite Marvel post credit scene. Uh, probably the one with the best cut material as well. Um, cuts out a full dialogue scene with Wolverine. And um, Deadpool's take on a very famous time travel moral question. Um... From that, it was just a fun movie. This is this is probably the most fun to watch. But it's not in the top three because of personal preference. So, speaking of which, let's get to the number three. Alright, so third place, X-Men First Class. Uh, this one is really good. Uh, I love... The Cold War. It's a period of history. And apart from movies that actually were set during the Cold War, you don't really get a lot of them. You know, I think probably the most famous Cold War movie might be, um, might be From Russia With Love. Uh, that's definitely my favorite one that I've seen. And there's also Bridge of Spies. That's a pretty recent one as well. It's really good. But First Class is such a good movie in several aspects because you get so many different characters and yet it all works. It's all timed. You know, literally everything's on a timer because this is building up to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Really interesting period of history. Uh, and uh, the highlight performance-wise easily is Michael Fassbender. It, Took me until the next his next appearance to actually realize McAvoy could be a younger Xavier. But ultimately, this is a very good prequel. I like the story as well. You know, you get these introductions to this original group of X Men, and that's pretty cool. Um, you also get a pretty interesting, well, pretty funny Wolverine cameo as well. But this one, I just think that the top two are better. That, that's really it. So, what's the runner-up? Because number two is... X-Men Days of Future Past. This movie is incredible. So, I the only to um, X-Men movies. I've gone back to watch a second time because I absolutely thought they were fantastic. Was Days of Future Past and my number one. Days of Future Past is such an incredible story. The stakes feel like they're constantly high. All of the characters are incredible. This is... Easily McAvoy's best performance as Xavier. I think Fastbender's best performance is first class, but this is where you realize, where I realized anyway, during my not marathon, but going through of the franchise that I did throughout last year and this year, that uh, McAvoy could be the new Xavier. You no, know, um, 
time travel itself is a very interesting concept. And so that was such a cool thing to see is, yeah, I mean, of course, time travel. This is the other one I'd read, and that one, uh, since Kitty Pride back in time, but I think the choice to have Logan go back in time is the much better story idea because he has been there for all of this and he can convince Xavier this and I think that this might contain the best scene of the franchise which is McAvoy's Xavier talking to Patrick Stewart's Xavier that is such a cool idea and it works perfectly. And it doesn't come off as... It doesn't come across as fan service. It's just... It's set up naturally. And just great. That final White House confrontation as well. I don't know if that was intended to be a reference to X2 starting at the White House. But, you know, it does tie that in. And I also I also think it's funny that uh, in the rebooted timeline, uh, Logan or Wolverine, uh, whatever you want to call him, I'm going to call him Wolverine. I have done for the rest of this video. Wolverine uh, is, yes. the, is the history teacher. I just, I just think that's perfect for him. But, uh, I mean, there's one left, right? I mean, it kind of has to be the number one that remains. Yeah, I know. Number one is cliche, but I mean, it kind of has to be. So let's not beat around the bush anymore because number one is Logan. I mean, come on. It, it had to be Logan, right? There was no, There was no other movie that could take the top spot. Logan is fantastic movie right i mainly decided to do this sort of going through the series now so i could get to this movie because of the new indiana jones james mangold the director of logan is directing indiana jones the dial of destiny and i wanted to see how he handled the final well what was supposed to be the final appearance of an iconic character so i wanted to see how he handled wolverine's you know the end of hugh jackman's time as wolverine and i was blown away uh yeah i was just i was blown away by this movie i mean one hugh jackman himself it is just shocking that he did not get a Best Acting nomination for this movie. Because he absolutely should have gotten it. Um, this also is a very, very different performance for Patrick Stewart. Um, and sometimes child actors can be a little iffy in things. I think... Daphne Keene, who plays X-23, or Laura, is probably one of the best in the X-Men series for child actors. Um, the villains aren't the best in the series. If I could say anything against this movie, it, the villains aren't interesting. But this movie has... Ah, oh, so many great moments. In incredible fight scenes, incredible character moments. Honestly, this probably should have been the end of the X-Men series. That probably should have been like, we're not going to reach any higher high than this. We'll stop here. We'll stop making them. Yeah, Disney will get the X-Men license back, but we would have ended on a high note. I mean, I feel like they kept going after this so they could keep the license, but ultimately, you know, Disney bought them out. Um, 
But yeah, honestly, I mean, I'm kind of struggling to say anything new about Logan because what I think is what generally everyone thinks. It's the best X-Men movie. It's Hugh Jackman's best performance as Wolverine. I mean, in that ending, I'll admit, second viewing, I was actually very close to tears with this one. And I would legitimately say this one is a con is this one could actually be in my top five favorite movies in general. Uh, very good. It's a really good movie. Fantastic story. Great characters. At this point, I'm just rambling. But yeah, that is uh that is it for my ranking of the X Men movies. Was my number one too obvious that it was going to be Logan? Are you shocked by the kind of high placement of X-Men Origins Wolverine? And leave your own rankings in the comments. That's it for this video. Like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.